Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Hello, what's up everybody? Brennan Isaiah Bingston. How you guys doing? Today, we are continuing with this bad mamma jamma. We are, let's see, there's been a couple of streams that we've been working on this guy. He is a uh, Warhammer 40,000 Servitor Skull. Um, and uh, we're putting this together for the intention of uh, 3D printing and painting. That's what we've been doing. It uh, looks like uh, my OBS is dropping some frames, so let me know if it gets super choppy. Let's see what I can do. I don't know why. It's being really weird right now, so apologies. Fortis, what's up? How are you? Um, so yeah, this is where we've uh, gotten to over the past couple of streams. Um, if you want to go back and watch it from the beginning, you can. Uh, ZBrushLive.com and then just find my uh, page, Brendan Isaiah Bankston. And then uh, you'll see some the previous streams there. Um, but yeah, this is um, where we've been and uh, we'll continue from here. I think today we're going to... Uh, we're going to work on a couple of different things. I think we're going to try to spice up the rocks a little bit. We'll try to spice up this thing a little bit. And then we'll kind of just touch things here and there. Yes, that's what we are going to do. Um, the intention is to, to print this guy out and paint him. Um, if you want to check out some of uh, the work that we've done so far. Um, there is our media streams, if you want to take a look. All right, um, let's let's roll. So last stream we ended up with um, putting this guy together, and then just after the stream I, I kind of just duped it and put one over here, and then put one over here. So the idea being that um, I want this guy to float, in the um, in the actual model, so I want to make sure that I have um, weight distribution uh, fairly evenly. So this will be one, this will be two over here, and then we'll have another one over here. It'll connect kind of back here, like that. Uh, print size would be probably what is um... I have a conversion over here. Um, I want it to be maybe 100 millimeters, maybe 125 millimeters, something like that. More of the collectible size. Something like that. Um, probably, I'm thinking around um, this size. Let me see. Let me grab my camera real quick. This size here. Maybe about like that guy. Maybe actually, maybe even bigger. Uh, we'll see. Maybe the um, McFarlane size might be kind of cool. Something like that. Um, yeah. So that's that's the idea. All right, let's. Let's get rolling here. What are we going to work on first and foremost? I think we're going to uh, try to connect this piece back here first. So let's grab my handy dandy brush. Let's load brush from server tubes. There we go. All right. Uh, so this is one of the, one of the tricks that I use quite a bit. Um, for these types of brushes because it snaps to the surface um, and how do you get that in a good way from say here to here um, typically what I'll do is I'll just use a plain a plain Jane or I can use a um, like a sphere so let's let's do it another way I've shown it a couple of times in uh, the other streams using a plane, but this time we'll just use a sphere real quick and we'll just sculpt the plane that we want it on. 
no, no special resin or anything yet. This is um, it's actually the first print, uh, first model for printing that I've been working on. So does it? It is a bit of a an experiment for me. Um, but so the intention of this is to just get the the curve the way that I want it. So I want it to go kind of down a bit. So I want to go down and up. I don't want it to go up and around. What I'd like to do is to have it go kind of down and then up like this. So I'm just going to All right, let's get rid of this dude. Let's just delete that guy. Yeah, exactly. So um, the the thin stuff, uh, I'm trying to make sure that um, I'm going to be printing him big enough that this stuff would would be okay. So that's kind of where some of the oops. The challenges lie. Okay, let's have it swoop down a little bit more and then up. Okay, let's see what that looks like. So just grab this guy. Yeah, I I think the having the the relative size in scale is a necessity, right? So you're like, oh, okay, how how big do I want to print this guy? Um, and then that can determine how big some of those details will be. There's a lot of this small stuff. If you're if you're at like 32 millimeter, it's not it's just not gonna fly, unless you have a super high like 8K printer. So this is one way you can kind of do this. I just find it super easy to to do it this way than to try to futz with it in in other crazy ways. Oops. So let's try that one. So we'll do split unmasked. And then let's go down and just hide this one for right now. And then let's try one more down here. Maybe we'll just have it swoop way down. And then come back up like this. We still need to uh, have it bear some, some of the weight. So we just we can't have it go too far down. Split hidden? Yeah. Let's turn this dude off. And then let's isolate this guy. And now we can. I 
it doesn't really work that way. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, it just kind of one of those, one of those things that just kind of works, um, in a super clever way, <laughs> you know. Um, I use the I I can you know you can use either a plane or a um, some kind of mesh. What's up first? How you doing? Okay. And then let's isolate it like that. Let's see if that's going to work. And this is another way that you can do, you know, semi semi -compl complicated uh, stuff. But again, it really depends on how you everything set up because then you can get some kind of this kind of weird jiggy jaggy stuff and weird compressions and things uh the other way is um to use a plane and then just you know so let's do it with a plane so let's append a plane in there let's go all the way to the bottom get this guy The nice thing about a, a plane is uh, you can simplify your curves a lot easier um, just by keeping it to one dimension at, at first and then just really kind of gently pull it up in a third dimension. I'll show you just a second here. Okay, so let's go like that. And then we'll go back to this. Gonna have a little bit more of a sweep. Let's say maybe 50 is good. And the nice thing about using the plane too is that you can kind of adjust it after you put in the curve a little bit easier. What's up, Voxel? Yep, we are doing a Warhammer 40,000 servitor. Yes, servitor. Let's even get a little bit of more curve here. So maybe something like this. All right, and then um, then what you can do is just pull it off in. Oops, I accidentally made that a little bit fifth. So let's go back to fifty, and then this is the one I want to pull. Then what you can do is you can just in one other dimension you can just pull it like this and then that way you have a nice control over a th like a um, you know now now it's moving in a, th a third dimension like that uh, and then what you can do is so let's do split unmasked Let's turn that one off and go down to this guy. And then what you can do is if you want to kind of adjust it around a little bit, then you can just say, um, let's just, or if you don't like necessarily where this is, you can just do this kind of thing. But I think that that right there is okay. And I'm kind of liking that they're a little bit different sizes as well. Okay. 
All right. That one feels all right for the moment. We probably should center that guy. Like that. Ha-ha! Success. So I think this one, I want to redo this, this one because it's, that was just kind of a temporary one and it's a little kind of all over the place. So I want to continue this like nice flow that we have here. But the other thing I, I may want to do as well is is take this whole piece off of the center. What is this piece here? Oh yeah, it's the center piece. Okay, let's do this. So I'm gonna uh maybe not on this guy yet. I'll hold off on this dude right now to break symmetry and what I want to do because I, I want to do some more detail on that guy so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this I'm going to go to my pizza boxes and then we'll use uh, select here to say I want just these guys don't want that one don't want that one oops Let's turn, <laughs> let's turn that off. Okay, cool. So I have those two pieces. Then what I can do, is, oops, let's do this. And then we're going to just kind of give it a little bit more life. Let's also probably make sure that it's coming from the right spot. <laughs> Cause you know, that's, Probably a good idea. What's up, Alex? How you doing, man? I call everybody man. I apologize if that's not the case. I'm from California, so everybody's man and dude. <laughs> dude is kind of like the F word, right? It can just be applied to everything. Okay, uh, let's see what that looks like. It's a little too much. I'm thinking. Ooh, you know what I can do? Oh <gasps> yes. All right. Uh, what I I want it to have because it's so straight right now. I want it to have a little bit more. A little bit more oomph to it. Um, so let's take it off of that. I'm on this guy. So I'm just going to use one of the bend curves. Well, who the hell's Ben? Curve resolution. Let's go one more, and then I'll do is just go. Yeah. Oh yeah. Maybe we actually want one more in there. I want it to go like this. So now we got a, this. It kind of goes with this whole feel, right? Uh, I had symmetry. Yeah, that's when I moved it over and it like did that whole like thing. That's because symmetry was on. You are correct. So we'll just do accept. And then we'll go. What's up, Strawberry? And we'll just move this little thingamabobber over there. And what I may do uh, at the end is I may take this, the whole skull, and just kind of like tilt it just a little bit so it's not quite exactly symmetrical. Cool. All right, let's take a look at this this dude, bro. See what, we're, see what we got here. How can we make this guy cool? I think what we'll do is we'll make this guy 
um, kind of like this little piece, but vertical. So maybe what we can do is, let's see where this guy is on the axis. Yeah, he's close. So one of the cool things is if you still have your orientation, and I barely actually even use this, but uh, when I do, I was like, oh yeah, I totally forgot about that. Um, if you still have your original um, orientation of your gizmo, you know, right? Because usually we're we're like, oh, uh, you know, hit Alt and put that to the middle of uh, the mesh and then reorientate to world uh, while holding Alt, but if you don't hold alt and hit reorientate, it re reorientates the whole thing back to. Yeah. Any tips on how to build speed, especially in a work environment? Um, it really depends on uh, what you're working on, I think. Um, a lot of the times, for me, uh, being a, a character artist, uh, speed a lot comes from uh, utilizing pre-existing pieces. Um, so, like, we always start from a base mesh, or we grab something that kind of looks like something, um, and then re kind of rejigger it to what you need it to be. So, reusing assets, I think, um, at least for for getting started is probably one of the quickest and easiest ways for um, speeding up your process. So uh, while you're working and while you're creating the things for every single project that you're working on, be thinking about how you can use those things that you're making for that particular project for another project. So think about like, oh yeah, this, this thing that I'm making right here, Maybe I'll save that into a, a kit or something for myself so that I can I can go back and be like, oh, yeah, I have that one little canister thing. OK, cool. I'll just go grab that and then build a little thing off of that. Um, so reusi reusability, I think, is one of the biggest, biggest and quickest ways to um, speed up your your workflow. Because starting from the beginning every time is just so much time. <laughs> Chris, nice. Um, what's your go-to in order to UV your models? Um, my actually, my my typical, and I use this in production all the time, is um, I learned this trick from some Blizzard artist. I forgot exactly who it was, but um, the the UV master here in ZBrush uh, is awesome. The the unfold algorithm is amazing, but the um, the like rejiggering of your shells and stuff and packing things is is not really the strong suit of ZBrush. So typically, what I'll do is like if I want to redo or UV this guy, um, then I will you know let's duplicate him real quick. Um, let's Z or mesh him real quick. Um, your mesh. Oh, let's just go. Let's go 20 by 20 at 5,000 polys. So what I'll typically do is I'll just I'll just unwrap it here real quick with the UV master. Cool. Go to UV master. Unwrap. That gives that usually the unfold is really really good. So then you can just do morph like that, and you say, okay, cool, that's my UV. Um, and then I will take that, put it over, and export it into like a, a core package, like a Maya or Moto or Blender or something, and then use the core package to pack things. So I'll usually will get it as low as possible, um, and then just do a quick unwrap, and then shoot it over because uh, the unwrap is actually really good. Uh, 
All right, let's see. Let's see what we can do about this guy. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Yep, great tips. Cool. Yep. Mm. The new modern speed definitely listen to what he says about building a base mesh. Yep. Base meshes are, are like anything that can get you off the ground quicker so that you start working on the thing that makes the difference, uh, the better. Like that, it, that's just, it's gold. <laughs> uh, let's see if we can use, uh, let's turn on symmetry. Let's see what our radial symmetry is looking like. Um, let's go local. Hey, that's... Cool. All right, where are we at here? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to brush insert, um, grab a insert print. Can you guys still hear me? OK, cool. My headphones turned off for some reason. That was weird. Um, okay, actually, before I do that, let's turn off symmetry, because I want to put these guys in the middle, but I don't have a, um, all right, I want to do something like this. So I'm going to make a, a boolean out of these. I want to use these guys, but I want to put it in the middle, but I don't have a, a, a edge loop in the middle. So I'm going to turn off symmetry real quick. I'm going to go to my modeler brush, and then I want something to go right in the middle. So if I just do insert single edge loop, I don't know exactly where that is. So instead of insert single edge loop, I'll do, do multiple, and then I'll just click once. And that will make sure that it's in the middle. But it's not really, is it? Because this goes actually into this thing. Okay, so scratch that idea. But that's how you do it. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Um, let's go back to my brush insert, grab this one, we'll grab that guy. We'll turn back on symmetry, and then we go. And then what I can do is instead, and I can use this depth. And then depth, by the way, is in brush depth, brush placement. So if you want to find that, it's in brush depth right there. Uh, so let's go, I'm going to hold down shift. Okay, there you go. Boom, bada, boom, bada, boom, boom, boom. Uh, your concern is more related to packing because Max seems to not have the same packing settings as Maya. Yeah, all the packing settings are different. Um. You actually may want to look at that. I know there's like Riz, I think Rizom, I think is an, uh, a UV specific one. What's up, Bryce? Uh, so you can look into those. I know that there's plugins and stuff for Maya for, um, let's do split on fast, for good packing. Uh, but honestly, the, the layout feature in Maya, it does an okay job. All right, where am I? Where? Here we go. Okay, cool. So then this one we'll just use negative. We'll turn on live boolean. Cool. Look at that. And then maybe what we'll do is, if we want those a little bit taller, want to be a ballo, shut go. Maybe we'll just do that. And if you don't want to stretch, if you want to keep like the um, the curvature as is, you could just go, you know, move this down. Turn off perspective for a second, um, and then, oops. Just do something like that. Cool. 
cool. Uh, maybe what we'll do too is we'll let's turn off symmetry. Let's clean this guy up just a touch. And let's see what. Oh, let's go. Uh, I just turned on a uh, dynamic subdivision. I have that um, map to shift D for me, which is pretty. Uh, it's because these were already creased, which is nice. Nice. I think those little holes are not going to work. I think they're a little too small. The other thing I do too is, um, I was talking about this last stream, is that I don't really like 90 degree angles in things. Um, so this is, I, I'd like this to be a little bit smaller on the inside than the outside. So you can, it may not cause enough trouble doing something like that. So, and you can just see it from more angles. It looks more, a little more pleasing. So what we can do is let's go to these guys. Um, so I can just size these insides, right? That should work. Okay, so how do we do that? Cool. You know what we could do is just uh, group by normals. I like that. Uh, let's turn on double so we can see everything. Um, we'll group that. Okay, cool. We'll uh, go to my modeler brush, and then we'll go to size, scale, uh, by polygroup, and then we can just go pushed. There you go. Something like that. And then we can use uh, the, oh crap, what is it? Um, Bevel Pro, where is Bevel Pro? Do I even have it installed? I do have 2022. Bevel Pro. So we could try to do that as well um, and go in and do that. But maybe I'll go in and fix some of these 90 degree angles as well. Uh, so then we'll just go into Slide, edge loop complete, and then we'll just go whoop. Grab this one, pull that down just a little bit. So it still acts like a um, like a 90, but you can start seeing it from more angles, and it's not quite as kind of crisp. And it just gives you a little bit more visual fidelity. Um, let's grab, oops. This one, we'll just pull that down just a touch. Take this one, pull that. There. That's good. Cool. So we're still good? We're still good, all right. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, let's grab our pizza boxes. Oh, uh, cool. We'll use the stager here too. This is a really good uh, spot for the stager. So, uh, so this is home stage. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll take it and we'll put it over here for our target stage or our target. Okay, that's our target stage. Cool, so then let's turn that off. So now that we, if we use the stager, which by the way is in um, 
it's in subtool here. No, is it subtool? Or is it? No, it's in geometry. Tool geometry. Uh, so then we can say uh, switch the stage. Oh, we did do that. Okay, cool. So here's the problem. Uh, we didn't we didn't set it for this one. So it's easy. So we'll say this is target stage. Um, actually, let's just do it again. So we'll turn that off. Um, I'll turn these two off. Actually, that's home stage. That's home stage. Cool. We'll turn this back on. Turn that off, and we'll just put this put this back over here. Do it one more time. That's the problem of doing it with um, boolean pieces. It's okay. Easy peasy. Cool. So this one we're on there, so that's the target stage. And then for this one, we'll say that's the target stage. All right, let's turn Boolean back on. There you go. So we got a little bit more life in here now, which is cool. Uh, Stager is... Um, just remembering a uh, translation scale and rotation for one spot or another. So if you go down to, uh, if you look in geometry, oh, where is it? Sorry, subtool. No, yeah, tool, geometry, home stage, uh, tool. Geometry. Is it modified topology? Anyways, it's in here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Stager. Um, so what you can do is you can set a home stage or a target stage, um, and that will just remember a translation, rotation, and scale of that subtool between one spot and another. So you can say, um, oh, this one I want to, uh, because they're both set, right? They can say, okay, I want to go back, so switch the stage, uh, and that will go back to whatever my home stage was. And then I can work on it and do the things. Okay, cool. Um, all my symmetry is good and all that. And then I say, okay, switch stage and go back to the target stage. That way, um, it, it's a really quick way to remember two spots, uh, which is really, really handy when you're doing something that needs like symmetry, for instance. Um, it's also a good uh, way to try out different positions of things. Okay. So let's grab this dude. Um, I don't want, to, why do I have all those together? That's weird. Um, auto groups. Let's do split hidden. Yep, exactly. You can throw it, you can work on one piece and then throw it back and forth, which is really, really helpful. So um, super helpful. God, uh, there were ways to do it before with like nano mesh and stuff and like doing or, um, kind of this weird kind of workaround, but they moved it to uh, stager. So I'm going to do dynamic subdivision there just to give those some subdivisions. Um, and again, this is working because it has um, creased edges here. It's working nicely. Yeah, it's super helpful. I'm thinking maybe what we can do is give this little thing uh, like a flange here.
Uh, give me one second, guys. Okay. All right, there we go. I think you guys can still hear me, right? Cool. All right, um, so we'll just do like a little flange on this dude. Um, and then this is, I use, uh, shift V I set up for um, ghost ghosting transparency transparency with ghosting um, so let's go to our Z modeler brush okay we're just gonna do it on that side too oops so let's go insert single edge loop Yeah, looks okay. Uh, then we'll just go, uh, we're not scale, we want Q mesh, uh, poly loop. Oops. There we go. We'll just get a little flange there. Yeah, um, I'm gonna get it all printed out and stuff first uh, before we actually. So that's a that's a good point. Um, we're actually going to be doing a a giveaway for this guy. This I'm going to let all y'all have this one for free uh, if you so want to, and you can print it out and paint it yourself. Um, the idea being that um, this guy is uh, meant to be painted, so. If you would like to get your hands on this STL, um, print it out yourself, paint it, send us some images. Um, all you got to do is sign up for our newsletter on Clinkerbuilt Studio. Um, link in the description. Not in the description. <laughs> link in chat. I've been watching too many YouTube videos, dude. Um, so yeah, if you want to keep up track of what we're doing over at uh, Clinkerbuilt, um, and also get your hands on whatever version this is going to end up as. Um, so you can print it out yourself and paint it, or not paint it, you can just print it out and have it if you want. Um, it's kind of a more of a a, a community event is what it's it's really uh, meant to be. So uh, it's kind of giving back to you guys, you know? Uh, so let's do slide edge loop complete. And then I'm just gonna grab this guy and pull him so he's not at a 90 degree. The same thing for this one and this one so it'll, it'll take me a little while and um i i haven't actually done a lot of printing myself so uh bear with me as we get all the stuff ready to roll okay so then what i also want to do is i want to crease those edges yes i am a mini mini painter um actually um this is actually a good time. I gotta show you guys the the piece that we just finished. Uh, as actually, you know what? Let me let me do this first before I forget. <laughs> Let's go crease, edge loop complete. So we'll just crease that one. Crease. Oops. Crease that one. And then now when I do a uh, dynamic subdivision, I've got that. Cool. All right. And then we can sculpt around that. I used to work for Games Workshop back in the day. Show me the minis! That's awesome, man. Yeah, I, I, I've i been doing painting since I was a kid. Well, I took 25 years off. <laughs> but uh, I just got back into painting probably about a year or so ago. 
Um, here, let me show you the, the latest one that we just finished up. Now, this is not a uh, Games Workshop. This is from Bestiarium. Bestiarium? Bestium? Uh, minis. This one is The Jailer. This is the one we just finished up. Actually, not this one. That one's got a mistake on it. So, there we go. He's a lot of fun. He's uh, this big. I'll show you. He's about that big. You see it? He's a lot of fun to paint. I, I really wanted to focus on... Uh, actually, you know, the screen is a little bit blown out, so... Look for it on Instagram. I'm going to post him on Instagram today. So if you want to follow us on Instagram, do it. Yeah, I, I like the kind of the, the bigger pieces. Um, we actually just finished up um, the Titan, Warlord Titan as well, from uh, Adaptus to Titanicus. This guy was a lot of fun. Uh, and then I made all the magnets and everything like that so his arms come off and swivel and and everything uh he's got some pictures up on our website right now if you want to see uh some more details there um, but he will actually be up for sale on our storefront pretty soon so if you guys are interested in adding to your collection or just want to collect um these guys are up for sale i actually just finished this guy too um i haven't done any pictures of him yet but uh, this guy is also from BCRM, uh, printed by Questborn. They have um, a lot of cool stuff as well. So yeah, that's this guy's fun. Uh, let me show you some of the. Let's see. Let's see. How about Belisarius? Everybody loves some Belisarius. Call. This is. Mr. Dr. Call. So uh, when I'm when I'm doing this um, this sculpt, probably a little bit bigger than this guy is what I'm what I'm thinking. Uh, but this is the the style I'm going for. This is the kind of uh, the the kind of dirty, grungy, more realistic uh, style of of things. Thank you. Um, I got all kinds of other stuff. Uh, oh, this guy too is really awesome. Um, this is the Lancer from um, Chaos Masons. He is a uh, obviously a, a Wacom stylus holder. Oh, it's this guy. This guy. So uh, we do all kinds of different uh, paint jobs. I actually, we actually did a whole set um, for a board game of um, Evil Dead 2. Uh, somebody had an Evil Dead 2 <laughs> board game with about like 72 miniatures on it uh, that we painted up for a client. So yeah, that's what we do. And then, uh, you know, if you want to get your hands on some of these ones, some of the, um, some of the actual models that we paint where they are selling them. I actually has a, a Dune Strider here too that will, will be coming soon. Lots of fun stuff. Lots of fun stuff. A lot, lot of stuff coming up. I have, my backlog is like ridiculous right now. For the things I want to paint. Um, Alright, so, so that's good. Oh yeah, let's sculpty sculpty around this. All right, so let's see what we can do about just Oh, thanks, Fortis. I think I may need to take this guy up in resolution. Let's see what what he is at. But yeah, so that that's what we're we're gonna do with this guy is um, I'm gonna give it away, give it away, give it away now. 
to y'alls. Let's do split hidden, and then this one we're going to let's dynamesh this guy again. Okay, he's at five twelve, so let's take him up to ten twenty four. So we'll say he's ready for some more resolution. So ten twenty four. Okay. Now we get a little bit more actual detail in here. And maybe we can use, instead of that, maybe we'll use Orb Cracks. Orb Cracks is pretty good. I like Orb Cracks. I wonder if maybe we just use Sculptors Pro when we do it. A little bit cleaner that way. So what what did you do for uh, Games Workshop when you worked there? Forgot who said that. Yeah, voxel. Yeah. All right. So. We'll just get a little. Can maybe just even this out just a touch. Kind of as we go here. Push this in. Oh, retail in the NYC store. Nice. Nice. Yeah, they had um, had a the GW store in our local mall here in San Jose for a while, but it shut down. But now, uh, now there's a, another one just opened up, um, pretty close to us. So I try to make it over there when I can, but with kids, it's really tough. <laughs> I want to go play. So do I. Shut up. Just kidding. Let's take her, take him with us. All right. We'll do just get a little integration. We'll just push that in just a little bit. Okay. Uh, maybe now maybe we'll fix this guy up too. So what um what I do want to do is I want to I do want to work on some integration for this piece here. So I think uh. I think what I'm going to do is sculpt in some little L bracket, brackets to this guy. <laughs> Since then you've been painting? Nice. Painting's nice because, um, I mean, f for me, it's it's a nice kind of escape to away from the computer. So I'm, uh, my professional job is a video game artist. Uh, so I spend all day <laughs> staring at the screen anyway, so. Uh, this is not symmetrical. So let's go mirror, mirror, and weld.
You know what we can do? Watch this. So I want to retain um, some of this. Uh, there's a, just a touch of asymmetry in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use store target, store morph target, and then I'm going to mirror, mirror and weld. And then I'm going to go brush, morph, morph, and then I'll just, what does that say? Oh, eh, dang it. Okay, maybe, maybe this will work. Did that work? My headphones keep disconnecting, that's weird. Can you guys hear me okay? Alright. Okay, yeah, that doesn't work either. All right, well, let's just do it again. Uh, mirror, mirror, and weld. And we'll just leave it like that. That's fine, whatever. All right, so let's sculpt in some L brackets. Um, so what I want to do is, you know, how do I get a piece of geo that's in here? Um, uh, let's just append a cube real quick. Recently, you got back into ZBrush. Uh, but how do you guys sculpt very sharp and thin parts like the skull's nose without breaking the geometry? Um, the trick is to use backface masking. I'll show you just a second here. So if I want to, let's say I want to come in here and I want to sculpt, I want to sculpty sculpty, sculpty sculpty sculpty, right? But then you're like, oh, what is it? Does it do stuff to that back there? And you're like, oh, I want to do the thing. And you're just like that. Oh, uh, what you do is use back face mask, which is in auto mask, brush auto masking. So if you go to brush, you go to uh, auto masking, and it's back face mask right here. Uh, if you turn that on, it will uh, disregard the back faces, which means that I can come in here now and go like that and it doesn't affect the back face uh, and that is a uh, brush specific so let's say if I'm uh, on the move brush uh, then I can then right because if I'm on the move brush and I'm like oh, I want to want to move all this around like well but I don't want to move that piece, you can still use br br backface mask on um, a lot of different things. So that it doesn't grab the other side. What it's doing is it's looking wherever you're grabbing, it's looking at the uh, the normal, um, the face normal. And it says, okay, anything opposite of that, um, I'm going to not move. That's why you're able to grab in there from any direction. So backface mask is um, is super handy when it comes to that. Okay, so let's uh, let's go back to the, the L bracket real quick. So what I'm gonna do is so I just want this kind of L bracket. Actually, not. Eh, well, I'll do that. Uh, let's just leave that one. What I want to do, I'll just I'll just grab it from here because I'd like to have this curvature. So um, there's there's a lot of times when I'll just I'll source whatever the curvature is. Um, so I'll just do it real quick so you can see. So maybe I'll have one bracket kind of come up here like this. And 
no, no, I don't need it to be perfect. I just need to grab something like that. So then what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to assign a uh, poly group to that. So I can do either Control W or I can do Group Masked, uh, which is in the poly groups. Uh, and then I'll just isolate that guy Oops. like that. We'll do Split Hidden. And then I'm just going to undo all of that stuff because I want to keep that on this subtool. But what's nice is that when you do Split Hidden, it gives you a new subtool, which is that piece. Right, and then I can just go in and do uh, polish my groups, uh, do a quick Z mesh. So we'll say 20 by 20. Uh, let's go uh, same. Now let's go half Z mesh. And then we can do, let's mask off the corners real quick. Do polish break groups again, clean up some of those edges. Uh, we'll do one, half again here. What's up, Tattoon? Uh, and then I'm just going to, I'm going to kind of clean up some of this uh, morphology in here. So to do that, I usually use the Alt Smooth. So I'll hold down Shift, start smoothing, and then I'll, I pick my hand up uh, and what that does is it will average out the vertices uh, inside the outer vertices while still trying to retain the overall shape cool there we go uh, and then maybe what I can do is just do uh, yeah, I'll do project right yeah. um, so now I want some thickness to that Uh, we'll just do poly group all. Oops. So we'll get some thickness to that. And then what we can do is just kind of grossly here. We'll just take this. I just want some more geo here. So I'm going to go, oops. something like that. Oops, that was weird. Why is it over there? So I got the beginnings of an L bracket, and then I'll just kind of move this into spot. I'm going to end up dynameshing this thing and kind of moving it around a little bit, so I don't really care about the geo. It's just to get an overall shape here. And then we'll just make sure that this corner kind of sits down here like this. Like that. Maybe this will come down here. More like that. Okay, and then um, let's maybe f let's go. Let's take it down to five twelve first. Uh, any tips on cleaning head scans? Uh, yes. For head scan cleaning, uh, subdivision levels are your friend. I would say project and subdivision levels. Um, what I would do is is um, take your take your head scan uh, and project it to a um, 
a head that has good uh, subdivision levels and then you uh, project it at subdivision one subdivision two three four five six wherever you want to go up to uh, projected each one of those and then now you have these um, subdivision levels that you can clean up as you go so you use subdivision levels and project and then clean up each level of the subdivision as you go and do any kind of sculpty sculpty that you need to do uh, but the best thing you can do is get it onto a, a good mesh easiest way to move forward in a clean clean way okay oh and then uh, either we can make another one of these or we can just do um, can uh, control alt move that would give me yeah, absolutely. Um, the other thing too is I, I'd look at um, just Google search it on on YouTube. Google search it on YouTube. Search for head scan cleanups uh, tips on YouTube as well. Um, they'll probably give you some other good tips. But um, I actually did quite a bit of head scanning um, as a job for for a while, and that was that was our our of way of of doing it which it worked out really well it is for a large studio that i won't name at the moment and this is um this is kind of what i was saying for how, how you you know earlier like how do you do work quickly uh, this is one of the ways is just make make something the least amount of times you have to make something and then reuse it as much as possible as much as possible So it's kind of a mix between crude and uh, machined. Can we just... I think we need that there. Let me try something real quick. Um, let's do uh, Z modeler real quick. I'm going to uncrease these guys' um, edge. I'm just going to uncrease these mamma jammas quick like. better increase 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 there you go that feels better let's go in here and increase these ones as well increase increase Okay, that's good. All right, we need a couple of nuts. Uh, do experienced ZBrush users use Sculptures Pro a lot? For a beginner, I used it. Uh, used to see it as close to end all be all tool. Um, it's it's like any other tool really. Uh, it it has its place. Um, sometimes it's really really useful, and other times it's it's not useful <laughs> at all. Um, so if you're just trying to block something out real quick and you just, you just really need some extra um, little geo, uh, then it's then it's good. But if you have UVs on something, um, then it'll 
it'll wreck your UV. So there's definitely a, a place for it. There's a time and place for it, for sure. Um, it's like in this one, you're like, ah, well, you know, maybe maybe these L brackets uh, are, are are pretty good for the most part. And I'm like, ah, I just need to I just need to tighten this up, but I don't want to like mess up a bunch of this other stuff. So then maybe I'll, I'll just come in and just go, you know, just tighten this up down here. And I don't I don't want to mess with anything else over here. Right. So maybe I had like this nice. Uh, design on this part that was uh, like all nice and sculpted but in order to get more you know definition in here uh, I'd have to redynamesh it and I don't want to mess up any of this stuff so that's another good part uh, to use uh, another good time to use it is to just clean up little pieces uh, that you don't want to wreck anything else um, I use it still in early blockout stages in my professional career in video game art. So uh, there is definitely a, t a time and a place for it. All right, so we need a couple of little bolts. And I have some here um, I found in some IMM brush. And I don't want to go find it right now, so I'm just going to jack one of these. Uh, so let's duplicate. Let's isolate. Let's turn off symmetry. Um, delete hidden. Okay, so I have that one, and then I'll just grab it and just pull it over here. Just reuse that piece. Again, reusing. Reduce, reuse. If we take some content from the internet and rework it to get some other shape, is that comes under copyright issue? Um, I think the the good rule of thumb for that tattoo is, um, if it bears no resemblance to the original thing that you got, uh, then that's closer to okay. But if you are taking it and using it kind of as is and it's recognizable then that's when it starts to the, be a little kind of gray area um so like if i'm because uh, so a lot of people use like, the monster part brush things um you know so if you use something like that in your monster for say um and you don't edit it at all you just use it and throw it on there then that's kind of eh, it's a little like eh, yeah the rest of it's your monster but in your design but uh, just, uh so uh what i always suggest is uh it's kind of like photo bashing which is if you're going to use uh the whole of the part that you're grabbing from something else um as is uh that's when it gets a little squirrely but uh, or you just need to credit the other artist um, that did it. Um, but if you use it as a starting point and just, you know, it's kind of like, like a base mesh. Uh, you just want to get some shapes in there. Uh, and then you're going to kind of repurpose it and re-sculpt it to something else uh, for your final. That's a little bit more okay. It's a little bit more... I mean, there's all kinds of gray area. You know, you're like, what does it mean for insert mesh brushes from somebody else. You're like, do I need to credit every single artist um, for like this, you know, who made that piece? I have no idea who made that piece. It's part of an IMM brush that comes in ZBrush, you know? So if it's like, if you're taking like maybe Vitaly Bogrov's IMM brushes and you're just using those pieces like as is, it might be good to make a note somewhere and say this is from uh, Vitaly's IMM um brush library uh but if you start you know if you take a piece and then you completely you know you put it in but then you reshape it and reuse it so it's not recognizable as that and but you use it as kind of like a base mesh then that's a little bit more okay um maybe we'll we'll do one more let's see how that looks
Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, sometimes I see Sculptors Pro to quickly fix the weird holes and other mesh stuff that comes up when sculpting. Yeah, I use it, sometimes you can use it for that as well. Yeah, um, managing the poly count is always a little bit weird um, for, um, you know, things not lagging and, and those types of things. Um, maybe I can use my knife here. Haha. -ha. The knife. The knife brush is actually really, really helpful. Uh, if you just want to straighten an edge. Uh, the thing about the knife tool, though, is that it does have to be a closed mesh. But it is super duper helpful. For cleaning up edges. Um, as for, you know, things lagging, uh, it's, it, for ZBrush, it's not necessarily about how many polygons you have in the entire scene. It's more about the polygons that you have in the sub tool that you're using. So, I mean, you can look, I've got not that much right now, but my full production ZBrush files, like when it gets closer to, um, the high res being finished, uh, I'm easily around 200 to 250 million polygons, but I split up my sub tools uh, pretty, pretty, I would say evenly, um, but enough so that each sub tool only has around, you know, between at the highest uh, a million or so to uh, under, you know, three million. So that, that definitely helps. The other thing that really helps too is if you are done like overall shaping uh, to zero mesh it and use subdivision levels because when you use subdivision levels, um, it when you move like that, it will drop all the subdivision levels that's visible to its lowest, let you move, and then once you're done moving, it'll pull everything back up to its highest subdivision level. Yeah, you can definitely push it more. The the trick is to um, to not have your subdivision or your poly count more than you know a couple million per sub tool. That's where it starts to get a little hairy. And that's where things like dynamic subdivision comes in really handy, um, or just regular subdivision levels. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're cooking with some juice. What time we got? Okay, I got about a half hour or so left. Do you think it will improve my workflow? Oh, um, I read it. Uh, so I draw a lot since I was a kid, and I'm learning ZBrush, making some web courses, and I want to upgrade my workflow. I have a Wacom Intuos. Think about upgrading to a display tablet. Um, do you think it will improve my workflow? No, I don't think so, honestly. Uh, I've made my entire career on uh, a regular Intuos. It's really just a, it's just a tool, um, and it's how well you use your tools that makes you a better artist, um, not necessarily the tool. So, I and I know a lot of people that have never used a pen display. So, if it's if it's something that uh, gets you really really excited to do work. That's one thing, right? If you're like, oh, I want to do the thing, and I want to use this cool screen, and like it like entices you to do more work, 
then that's one thing to consider. But it's not necessarily something that's going to go, because I have this, it's going to make me a better artist. Yeah, that's one thing that I realized with the, with the pen screen is that, like, if I'm looking at it, I'm like, there's so many times where I want to do just, like, little work in here, but, like, my hand gets in the way, and I'm like, ah, oh, it's freaking annoying. <laughs> But it, the workflow is definitely a little a little different. Um, so let's uh, let's do auto groups on these guys. I'm just gonna liven these guys up a little bit, um, and I don't need the holes in there. So what I'm gonna do is let's grab this. I'm just going to kind of push these together so when I dynamesh, it will close those holes. And then um, I'm going to use groups so that they don't fuse together when I use dynamesh. Otherwise, when you have something that's too close together, it will fuse those pieces. It's like bitter beer face. <laughs> uh, you guys remember those commercials? Correct. You can't use um, Sculptors Pro with subdivision levels. Also, if you have UVs, they'll destroy the UVs. So plan wisely is what I say. To get around it, you could just duplicate the subtool to keep your subdivision levels. Um, and then on the duplicated one, kill the subdivision levels, um, do whatever sculpting that you need, and then use the previous one to uh, reproject. Close the top on. I already did those ones. I mean, all this stuff needs, is going to need to be closed up um, for the print anyway, so. Okay. So now that those are done, um, if I keep groups on in Dynamesh, oops, uh, let's do at least 5, 12. Oops, uh, let's turn groups on. Okay, why are you doing that? So 5, 12, thank you. We'll do groups. There we go. So now it closed up all those holes. Exactly what I wanted. And then what I'm going to end up doing is um, that's what this piece is for. 
is because it will close those middle holes as well. Because when we're printing, we're we don't need all those little holes in there. Uh, to make oh oh I see what you're saying. So uh, when you say make work easier, it's because you've been drawing for so long. Uh, feel more comfortable when you use paper. Um, honestly, it um, it doesn't take. It, it's not that long. It's not that big of a difference to get used to uh, using a tablet versus using a display. I don't think that uh, your comfortability with drawing for so many years. Um, will make that big of a difference in how well you work uh, on a tablet versus a display. Not that big of a difference. Yeah, I mean, it, it probably just takes, you know, a day or two, maybe even just a day, or maybe even just a couple hours of getting used to uh, the, the pen tablet. But I mean, if you, if you want to get a display, um, then do it, you know? <laughs> uh, let's do 10, 24. So sometimes um, when you are going up and, and I, this used to drive me absolutely insane before you're like, why isn't the Dynamesh changing? Like, it's not doing anything. It's I like I upresed it. Why isn't it going up? Uh, sometimes it it doesn't it won't do it if there's been no change to the vertexes in between when you when you raised or lowered it prior. So all you have to do is just do something. You know, so change change something and then redynamesh and then it will do it. See that? But it's only doing it on on the groups because I'm it's only recognizing the groups, right? So so just smooth those guys, redynamesh, cool, it does it. So that one actually took me uh, forever to realize. It's like, why isn't it doing it? Um, so typically when I up res in Dynamesh to get rid of all of this stuff really easy without like having to go and like smooth everything, uh, you can just go into Geo Clay Polish and just do a quick clay polish on it. And a lot of times it will clean up a lot of that stuff. Um, just make sure you clear the mask first. I don't have any spine reference up at the moment, so probably should do that at some point. Maybe we'll wait and to, to do the spine uh, until next stream. Just kind of soften some of this stuff up, up a little bit. Um, I will be back in two weeks from now to do some more of this stuff. All right, uh, what are some of the things I want to do before we go? I did that. That's what we wanted to do. Um, we did this back one. Um, I really wanted to redo this I-beam, but I think we can wait. No, Z... Oh, Embrace Z Modeler. It's amazing. But what I would do for Z Modeler, set yourself aside like one session and then go to Z Classroom or the Pixelogic channel uh, on YouTube and just search Z Modeler and listen to Joseph Drust or Paul uh, Gabry on their explanations of how it works uh, and just give yourself a little bit of time because it's so powerful so powerful especially when you um combine it with everything else you know whether it's um 
uh, uh, using live boolean system or uh, you know just it within the whole repertoire of of the zbrush tools it's just so powerful Here, look, it's easy. Watch this. Just go to append. Watch this. Okay, here's your quick Z modeler brush tutorial. All right, so bring up the Z modeler brush. Uh, whatever you hover over, whether it's a poly, um, a face, a uh, line, or, or edge, or a vertex, each one of them will have a different menu when you press spacebar. All right, so spacebar over a um, plane will give you polygon actions, right? And these are all of your actions. So you can bevel, you can equalize, you can delete, you can uh, Q mesh, you can move, scale, spin, all kinds of stuff, right? So let's say Q mesh, um, and then let's do a single poly, right? So Q mesh, single poly, boom, there you go. It's basically extrude, super easy. Right, and then you say, okay, well, what if I want to do a larger part? Well, you can use uh, Alt to tag different um, things, and then that's your poly group, right? And then from there, you can do all kinds of other things. Um, so you can do single poly, right? So as Q mesh, right, this is your action, and then this is your target. So you could say, oh, I want it to be a, a flat island, right? So now it's this whole thing. So maybe. Maybe this is a one poly group and there are different ones. So if you have it on flat island, it says, oh, this is your flat island. Okay, cool. I got it. Okay, cool. Or you can say, um, what if I just want to do this whole loop? And then you can say, uh, instead of flat island, you can go to poly loop. And then see the orange um, arrow underneath my cursor? So if you're on this side, it goes, your loop is this way. All right? If you go this way, your loop is this way which is really handy, right? And then you say, okay, maybe I want to like uh, make some other geo in here, like a, a loop inside of this. So let's go to uh, edge action. So you hover over an edge, you go to insert. Uh, so insert as your action, and then we'll do multiple edge loops or let's do single edge loops. So then you just click, if you click and drag, make one, another poly loop like that, right? And then you say, okay, well, maybe I want to go back and do um, a Q mesh in a poly loop again, right? Well, you don't have to change anything because in your um, in your polygon actions, you already have Q mesh, right? So you can say it like that. Oh, cool. Well, then I add an edge loop over here. Cool. And then uh, maybe I just want to do uh, a single poly, right? Boop, there you go. A single poly. And the other really cool thing too is that it's uh, smart. Uh, so if you do one, it, you know, it'll say, oh, cool you must want to uh, connect it to this other thing. Yeah, actually kind of do. Or if you want to create a, like a, you know, a slope, something like that, right? And then, um, you know, there's all kinds of other different uh, things that you can do. So let's say, uh, let's say you want to take this whole edge loop and uh, move, move just this edge loop. So if you come into edge actions, you can go into like a slide here. So slide edge loop complete. You say, oh, I could just slide that up this, up this, uh, up that face, right? Or I can say, now I want to go down that face. All right, or like, oh, well, let's make a hole here. Okay, cool. So let's do Q mesh poly group all, right? Cause that's one poly group. Or um, this is actually the same poly group as all these. So probably you want to just mark these ones. And then you can go, oh, we'll go in like that. Cool. But what if I want to make it um, like slope? Okay, well, then you can go into, uh, let's say, instead of uh, Q mesh, let's say inset. So then the target would be, uh, oh, let's do a flat plane. Because I want to just inset that flat plane. Uh, flat. Let's see if that works. And then this is your modifiers down here, right? Do you want it at the center and the border? Do you want the border only? Do you want all, these all kinds of different cool things that you could do. So then I could just say, okay, well, inset will just give me this type of result. Oh, okay, that's cool. And then I can go back to Q mesh, right? Let's go back to Q mesh, poly group all, 
and then now you have something like that, All right? Or uh, each one of these have um, has different sub actions. So let's say instead of creating a new edge loop and extruding it, what if I just want to, uh, you know, maybe come in like this, but I don't want an extra edge loop. Well, if I do something like this and I hold shift while I'm doing this, it'll just shift that whole plane without making a um, another edge loop. Oh, cool. That's that's pretty cool. Maybe I'll inset this again and then uh, go back to QMesh and then hold uh, hold shift because I don't want to create a new one. And I'll bring that out. All right, so you can start doing stuff like that. The other really cool thing too is where it's super duper powerful is you say, okay, look, um, I need to make uh, I need to make a separate ring around this thing. Like, okay, how do I do that? Uh, okay, so let's put in a couple edge loops. Oops, not slide. So we do insert. I'm sorry, guys. I know chat's going right now, but I'm on a I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. Give me a second. Uh, so let's say, um, okay, insert the edge loop here, and I want the whole ring to be about that big. Okay, cool. Um, now I can QMesh that whole ring because I know uh, QMesh can do edge loop, right? So QMesh, uh, a poly loop, I'm sorry. Uh, and you can say, oh, cool, I want to do that. But how do I, it's connected. How do I, how do I pull something off of that? So instead of using the alternate, which is like shift, right? Which was, does this type of thing. Uh, instead I can use alt, I mean, sorry, um, uh, control. And what that does is it gives you a brand new plane, but it um, it rips it apart from the other piece. So you say, oh, cool, I have this thing. Now I can say, oh, I'll just split that off and do something with that later. It's so easy, so awesome and cool. And there's all kinds of other things in here, like um, uh, let's say uh, inset, uh, let's see, what other things do I use? Uh, spin, crease, I use crease, uh, scale is another one that I use quite a bit, so you can come in and say, okay, in poly loop, uh, mesh center, so you can do a couple of different things, you know, maybe we'll do, um, polygon center, see what that does, axis center. Yeah, so there's all kinds of different modifiers and stuff. Uh, they can also use it for creasing, um, like somebody was saying. So uh, a lot of times I'll come in and just do uh, edge actions, and then I'll come into the crease brush, and I'll say, okay, do I want just one crease, or do I want it to be like an edge complete? And then I'll just hit that, and it'll crease all of this. Right? So then when I do a um, dynamic subdiv, Oh, didn't it? Oh, that's why. Uh, when I do a dynamic subdiv, um, it has that creased, right? It's like a really ugly camera. <laughs> uh, okay, I missed. I missed a bunch. Uh, still confusing. Okay, I've described. Z model is. At, oh, come on! Z model is awesome. The Boolean workflow is really awesome too. So let's say um, I want to use something to, uh, bool, you know, put some something in here, right? So maybe I, I have like this custom shape that I want cut out. Then what I can do is just say, okay, let's Q mesh, um, let's Q mesh poly group all, and then when I do this, I'll do the rip off method. So let's say, so we'll grab it and then it'll hit Control, and then it'll it'll give me this, right? Then now I can just QMesh this whole thing. Oops, let's, uh, let's just mark these again. So QMesh this whole thing. All right, then I can say, um, let's uh, let's do auto groups and let's split this guy off. We'll do split hidden. Oops. Whoa, where did my tool, where did my tool go? Whoa, get back over there, what are you doing? Give it to me. There you go. Um, and you can say this one I want to be negative, right? And then um, we'll just take this guy and move it in like that. So now I have uh, a key mesh, right? And then you know maybe you want to subdivide that. 
So there's all kinds of crazy cool stuff uh, that Z, Z, Z modeler is great for. So uh, one of the things in general is to say, okay, well, like, how do I make um, this tube brush? Super easy if you know Z measure, or I mean, um, Z modeler brush. So maybe we can grab a, uh, this dude right here, right? You say, okay, cool. That's all right. Um, let's get rid of the, the top and the bottom. Uh, so then uh, we can do group by normals, hide that piece, let's say double, we'll hide this piece, right, we'll do delete hidden, then we can say, um, okay, well, how do I make, uh, how do I make uh, the tube thing of a jig, right? Oh, Z model brush, and then we'll just come into QMesh, uh, we'll do poly loop. Um, and this is another really cool thing too, is that you, know, you can say, all right, well, I want it to come out about this much, but you know, like I, how do I make sure that I want all these other poly loops the same size? So if you do one action at a particular amount, if you just click once, um, then it will it will do the same amount. So you could just doop, 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 doop. Maybe I just want two loops on the top and two loops on the bottom. Oops. You're like, oh wait, um, actually I don't want, um, I don't want this inside. So maybe I could just take this loop and pull it back in a little bit. And then, uh, because I did a new amount, I can just click this one once, and it will go in that same amount. Like, okay, oh cool, now I have this tube. You're like, ah, well maybe I want, um, maybe I want, you know, this to be a little bit shorter. Uh, so maybe I can come in here, let's do uh, insert single edge loop, but instead I'm going to hold down alt. You see there in the little tag, it says if you hold alt, it deletes an edge loop. So just alt and click, alt and click. I don't need this one in here. Alt and click. Um, and then what's cool is you can combine all of ZBrush's other tools. You're like, okay, well, how do I move this edge loop down? Um, I can't really slide it. It's at the edge. It does weird things. Or, oh, well, pff. I could just come in and do, um, oops, I can use my mask. Flip that and then just use my move tool. Boop. Like that. And then now you've created uh, something that you can use as an insert brush. Like okay, cool. Um, I want this to be the tubey tube thing. But uh, before I do that, maybe I want to uh, take and slide these edge loops out a little bit so they're not at quite at a ninety degree angle. Cool. There we go. And then now these maybe are just a little. We just need a little bit more space there. Cool. Now I've made my insert brush. I can come down to create, um, do, actually, you know what? Let's unify all those. And I don't necessarily need all of these poly loops. So I'm just going to, uh, we'll do insert, we'll just alt click these guys. And then maybe we'll just add a couple in here. So it's a little bit more bendy in the middle. Cool. We'll do create insert. Uh, we'll do new. And then now you have an insert brush. Okay. Then we go to curve. Uh, sorry, go down to stroke curve, curve mode. Uh, we'll bend and then we'll do maybe elastic and we'll come up to, I think it's modifiers, weld points, right? And now you have. Something like that. That's that's some of the power of being able to embrace um, Z Modeler Brush. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, the nice thing about Z Modeler Brush is that you don't have to leave Z Brush to make something and then bring it back in, which is it's super. Um, 
wouldn't say aggravating, but it's disruptive uh, to me at least, uh, and to a lot of people to be able, to have to like leave a particular software, go create something, bring it back in, and then use it create. I have six years of learning ahead of you now. <laughs> no, it's easy. That's why I say like if you're gonna do it, like give it uh, give it a give it a a good shot, right? And uh, just go and you know just mess around with it, right? Just just know what each thing does. Uh, some some of the other cool things are the point actions, um, and you can use it for like your move brush. Right, so you can say, oh, I just want to move this one particular piece, um, or I can say, um, you know, sometimes I have things that like go into the background as well. So you can say uh, instead, you can just move infinite, which is really cool. So instead of by brush radius, you say if something is, you know, on exactly the same spot in depth, then you can. Kind of move it that way so you can say instead of we'll do by x oops not by x but you get you get the idea it's it's going through depth yeah it's it just it's like zbrush in general like if you're gonna learn zbrush just sit down forget everything that you know about other 3d programs and just give it a shot because it's so powerful and it's the same thing for z modeler is just don't don't really like don't bring your Maya, like box modeling mentality into it. I mean, you can. It's a good base to start from, but but use Z Modeler Brush as it's intended to use because it is so powerful uh, when when used the way that it's kind of supposed to be used. But I use um, I use this type of stuff all the time where I'm like, oh, I need to grab something, rip it off, and make a uh, uh, Did I delete that thing? Let's see, Valor on. Why is that off? Oh, it's on the other side. <laughs> it's like, where is it? Oh, my God. Um, yeah, so I use it all the time for if I want to do something uh, like create a, a hole in something, right? So it's it's exactly what I was doing. Well, not exactly, but similar to what I was doing with, with this particular piece. But I just uh, inserted some uh, some stuff, use the modeler, uh, and then you know did the, did the thing. So, anyways, that's the modeler. Uh, let's uh, let's delete that guy. Let's delete that guy. We don't need him, and we don't need this guy anymore either. Uh, do I have a hotkey for every one that I use? Uh, I use mostly. Uh, so I have a hotkey for A. So this is A. It's clay buildup. Uh, B is move topological. Uh, I'm sorry. S is move topological. Uh, D for H polish. Um, F for um, dam standard G for modeler brush and I think H is for insert yeah I use those the most so I, I go back and forth between all of those really quickly and then a few of the other ones that I use just kind of occasionally I'll, I'll just put up here all right so let's let's take the antenna for instance, like these were super quick, dirty, like gross kind of block-ins. Um, so let's let's take uh, really quick. So let's go. Uh, let's append in a cylinder, right? So I'm, this is going to be my antenna. So I'm just going to build an antenna real quick. So we'll go in here. Um, one of the things that you, yeah, this is okay. Yeah, it's okay. This is fine. Everything's fine. This is fine. All right, I'm gonna get the overall shape that I want. We'll 
we'll get the thickness. Maybe we'll we'll keep it a little bit thicker because um, of print quality and such. So maybe we'll just make it maybe something like, about like that. Okay. So what uh, what do I, what do I what do I want to have this thing do? First of all, I don't think I need all of these. Um, Let's also do this. Um, when you uh, when you're looking at the relative size of your subtool compared to everything else in the scene, um, it can become a little bit cumbersome with uh, like if your piece that you're working on is small. So uh, what I do typically is I will, and this is good use for the stager as well. So I'll I'll bring it out. You know, out in front, so I can work on it. I keep it in the middle, so it's symmetrical. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll say, okay, this is uh, this is my home stage, right? And because uh, the stager respects translation, rotation, and scale, then you can come in and say, okay, well, I want this actually to be over here, um, and I want it to be a little thinner, a little taller. We'll rotate like this. Rotate it back like this. All right, something like that. So that's target stage. And then we'll just switch the stage. All right, so basically, it's, so you can do whatever you want to this. You can change all of your vertexes, your vertex amount, your the shape. You can sculpt it. You can dynamish it. You can do all kinds of crazy things to it. But it's, that's because it only remembers the translation, rotation, and scale. So if I say, um, uh, let's come in, let's actually, let's make it this bigger. So I can actually do it, right? So then when I switch stage, oh, I didn't do the scale. It's supposed to do the scale. Might be a bug. It did do the scale. Oh, it's scaled after. Hmm. So let's do this. Let's switch the stage. Let's undo the target stage. And let's scale this thing down again, like that. Reset this target stage, and then go back. Now it scales both of them. Hmm, interesting. Okay, we'll have to work with that. Um, there's a, a like a relative scale difference between the, the, the two that you just kind of have to work out. And that's the beauty of doing things live. All right, so let's come in. We don't need all these edge loops. Oops, so we'll go to uh, edge actions. We'll do uh, insert, or you can just go to delete, but I'm just holding alt. I don't need all of this. Okay, so maybe what I'll do is, um, so edge actions, let's go to insert still, and then let's pull there, and then we'll do uh, a Q mesh, but I'm gonna do it on, I want this whole thing to go, so either I can, I can uh, mark like this by holding down Alt, or what I can do is come into Q mesh and do poly loop, and then just make sure that my orange line is going across the loop. Right, so then maybe I could just do that like that. So maybe we'll do something like this. Techniques exactly what they needed to learn. Awesome. Uh, it's like making a bolt, a series of bolts in a chain or something. It'll take a look accurately uh, next to what you just demonstrated. Cool. Excellent. Um, uh, the thing with chains too, uh, check this out. Right. So if you're making a chain, let's say this is a link, right? And you're like, oh, I need to make the chain. Um, maybe I just need to make like one or two or three or something like that. What you can do is this is this is super duper awesome. So uh, if you if you know how to duplicate within the sub tool, right? So if you hold down Alt and Control and click and drag, it gives you a duplication, right? But I'm still holding down my mouse. So 
if this distance is what I want to have, if I'm still holding down my mouse and I let go of Control and Alt, still holding my mouse down, and if I continue to move, it will duplicate that same amount, however many times that you want. So if you have a chain link, right, you can say, oh, okay, cool, that's my chain link. Um, and then you can just say, uh, let's let's duplicate this one, and then pull this back like this, and then rotate. 90 degrees, right? Those are your chain links. I use that one all the time. That one's fun. Uh, I do apologize. I haven't been getting to everybody's questions, I think. Oh, let's see. Let's catch up real quick. we got a couple minutes left. Um, okay, cool, cool, cool. There's a chain one. Uh, so how much time usually does it take to finish sculpting up a complete character. I've always watched time lapses, and then when I sculpt something, it feels like it takes me an eternity. Michael, um, that's a very, very good question. And that's one of the things uh, why my headphones keep turning off. It's really weird. Um, that's one of the things, one of the reasons why I sculpt live is to show people like, look, this stuff takes a long time to do. It takes a long time. And that's one of the de deceiving things about watching, uh, you know, time lapses of people working on things is that it, it takes forever. So let's, let's talk about like realistic production times for, let's say a AAA studio uh, character artist who's working on um, working on a realistic character. The outfit by itself, probably, I would say, a realistic timeline to create a, an outfit for a character, not including the head or the hair or all the facial blend shapes or any of that stuff. Um, just for the high res, probably two weeks of eight hours a day, five days a week. At least two weeks, maybe three eight hours a day, five days a week. And then another two weeks for uh, retopo baking and materials. So you're, um, yeah, at least. So a realistic high res AAA character in the video game right now, just for the outfit is probably between a month to two months of work total just for the outfit that that's from block out high res sculpting retopologizing uving baking materials in game it takes a that's eight hours a day five days a week so many 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 hours Lots of hours, and that's 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 the um, that's the problem I think um, f that it, it it's a little bit disconcerting when you're like, kind of trying to get in, um, yeah, and that's no room for error, yeah, uh, and, and that's saying that you've done everything correctly the the first time, and your art director thinks it's great and everything's just working. Um. <laughs> Uh, so it's, it can be really deceptive when you see people just working on small little pieces of things, especially for games, especially for high res games. And not to, not to say that, um, not to say that, that stylized is not as bad because your, your, a lot of your technical stuff is off put to more like painting, right? Cause for PBR realistic game character you're you're more about utilizing different materials and placing those materials in different ways on the character whereas stylized is like you're like painting all of those shapes into your maps um because it's not necessarily all the times uh pbr some games are starting to do that you know like overwatch really started doing that but um 
There's a lot more time painting stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, it, it takes a long time. So <laughs> that's one of the things about doing video game art while you're streaming um, is that the, the stuff, it just, if you're, let's say you stream a couple weekends uh, a, a month, that's only four hours, you know, if you're doing two hour streams, it's only four hours of work a month. A month. It may take you a full year to get through a full character uh, while you're doing it that way, you know? <laughs> so that's that's kind of been um, the thing that I've battled uh, doing video game streaming uh, character art is that uh, it just, it takes, it takes forever. It takes forever. And on that note, I am three minutes over. So um, let's see. I think I got everybody's question. If I did not get your question and you would like me to answer it right now, throw it back in and I'll see if I can get it answered quick. But I think I got mostly everybody. Yeah, absolutely, Michael. No problem. Yeah, I, it's not. It, that's not uh, like three v one was saying. It, it it that doesn't account for bug fixing and um uh you know once once your model goes to rigging, um you may need to do fixes on it for rigging to be able to do um its thing. Uh, I do have. Let's see. Oh yeah. Okay. So let me let me um, do some plugs here real quick. So here is my channel on Twitch. Um, I'm trying to do more streams there. So if you'd like to follow me on my channel, um, if you would also like to check out our website and our follow us through media, um, uh, we mostly do stuff through the 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 uh, through Instagram. So if you would like to follow us on Instagram, keep up to date with us, uh, that is there. Also, you can check out our website, ClickerBuilt Studio. And uh, we do have an Etsy shop right now, but we're probably going to be switching to something different from from Etsy now that they've raised their prices. Bastards. Um, but anyways, uh, if you'd like to give us a follow there, we're also um, going to be putting this uh, Servitor Skull... Uh, up for giveaway uh, to anybody who is on our uh, newsletter. So if you'd like to sign up for our newsletter, um, just go to our website there at About Contact and uh, just sign up for our newsletter. You can get stay up to date with um, all the stuff that we're working on, the things that we're painting, the things that are up for sale, um, and probably going to be doing some tips and tricks and stuff for painting as well sometime soon. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, I, I'm a more of a live guy than a make videos content guy, but we'll see. Um, I may start doing some painting as well on stream, uh, on my channel. Obviously ZBrush is not uh, necessarily a good place to do painting. So, uh, may do that on, on, on my channel, on my Twitch channel. So, all right. Uh, I think that's it. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you guys learned a couple of things, but most of all, I hope you were inspired to go make cool stuff. So you get out there and you go make some cool stuff. Uncle Brennan said so. All right. I think that is everybody okay. All right, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you in uh, two weeks. Uh, here, but I may next weekend I may be on my channel, so maybe see you then. <laughs>